Okay. We've, uh, we're over the 20 now, and uh, people are starting to slow down on the rolling in, so I guess we can get started. So uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Custom Style Extension Skill Lab. Um, we're going to be looking at customizing the look and feel of the BlackBod CRM using uh, CSS, SAS, and JavaScript. So uh, what we'll be doing today is uh, first we'll start off with some introductions and then we'll move into some samples, samples of what we mean by style uh, customization in using the style extension. And uh, then we'll go through a skill building demonstration where I'll uh, install the plugin and we'll walk through an example of changing and modifying this, the look and feel of the CRM. And then we'll wrap up with some tips and, and uh, tricks that will help you make your own styles and look and feels. So Jeremy Weldon, this is me. I'm a director at Brightvine Solutions. Uh, I've got almost a 25 years of professional technology and software development experience, including time working with uh, Student Transportation Inc. Uh, Blackbaud, where I worked for three years and as an independent consultant. I'm originally from upstate New York and I'm currently residing in uh, Charleston, South Carolina with my wife, my two kids uh, and my two bearded dragons. My co-presenter here is Keegan Wade. Uh, Keegan, I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> Sure, yeah, thanks, uh, Jeremy. So, uh, yeah, Keegan Wade, um, solution architect at Blackbaud, been here, uh, guessing, uh, long 15 years or so, uh, quite some time, uh, primarily in the CRM uh, development space. Uh, grew up in uh, central British Columbia, Canada. I, I now reside in uh, southwestern Ontario uh, with my wife and daughter. Thanks, Keegan. So what are we talking about with look and feel? And so what I'm going to show you, is this is what we're used to seeing, right? This is the CRM's default look and feel. And what we're talking about is making it look something like this, where we can change all of the custom, uh, you know, all the colors, the fonts, uh, spacing, padding. Um, yeah, so make it look your own, right? Uh, so this is an example that we came up with when we uh, first got this the extension uh, plugin, and this is what one of our internal guys came up with. So this uh, we can actually make available. I think I'll add it to the GitHub if anyone is interested. Um, so you can use it as the starting point for your own style. Um, another example here is what William and Mary had done. I think Keegan, you made this one correct. Yeah, that's correct, Jeremy. Yep, okay. this is the same yeah. one you might have seen on that lightning round uh, presentation as well. Absolutely. So you can see just, you know, going from the original, you know, this is definitely very you know, black bod. And but if you're working day to day and it, it is nice to have, you know, some style for your for your uh, fundraisers to be looking at, kind of keep your feeling of your own organization here and present your own organization's uh, look and feel. So we're going to go through and uh, set this up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the deployment package, and I'm going to walk through doing this in a moment here. So it, it's a zip file, and it's comprised of the following four, folder, four files. So we've got the actual plugin, the DLL that makes this happen, and we've got uh, a sample JavaScript. So just a web shell uh, combo min JavaScript here. This is where you'll put any of your custom JavaScript you want. We've also got the skin combo min CSS, and that's the cascading style sheets. This is where all the styles that will be loaded uh, from the plugin reside. And then we've got a SAS file here, S, uh, the skin combo min SCSS, which uh, is optional, um, but we recommend using it because it makes life a lot easier. Um, you can ultimately just modify the CSS directly uh, or you know, place your own CSS in there. Um, but the, CS, the SAS file makes things a lot quicker and easier maintainable. So we'll, we'll walk through that in a moment. So the deployment steps, actually uh, we've got it up here. I'm gonna read through it real quick and then I'm gonna actually show you. Okay, so first we're gonna deploy the above. <laughs> I see my auto numbering didn't work here and I apologize for that. Uh, deploy the above file folders to the CRM application server. Then we're gonna open up the vroot browser brand current brand options XML and we're going to modify one line to be 
pointing to Blackbaud custom effects web shell plugin general CSS web UI, our new DLL rather than the original. And then the last step is just going to be recycle your app pool. So let me walk through that with you. So first I've navigated to the uh, GitHub uh, repository that we have out here that I've put the this custom style extension at. You can see uh, the README does tell you all of the installation steps and the tips that are here as well. Um, so after this, if you want to go out and pull it down, you can get all that information right from here. So the easiest way here, you can clone it uh, if you're familiar with Git, but I'm just going to download the zip. And once it's downloaded, I'm just going to extract it. And then once it's extracted, we need to do a few things here. One is we're going to copy these two folders. And then I'm going to place them into my vroot directory and just paste them. And mine's in my program files directory, so it's going to require admin access. That's what you saw those prompts for. And as you can see, um, now we have in our custom, we have our new shiny plugin. Um, the other thing we want to look at next is modifying the, well, let me go back to this, back to, well, back to the, uh, the there we go. We want to go to the vroot browser brand current brand options XML, which I happen to have open right here in notepad. And as you can see, it's just an XML document with some settings. We are going to get rid of, or change this one, but for safety sake, I'm just going to comment that line out. And I'm going to paste the one that we have down here. Well, let me copy it, it won't. So I will copy it from my notes. Actually, I will copy it from this copy of the presentation because that's where I copied it from before. OK, so I'm going to copy it from here. And we're going to add this in here instead. And we're going to save that, which is in my program files directory. So it requires administration permissions. And once I've done that, the next thing we need to do is restart app pool. So I'm going to do that by launching my IIS Information Services Manager. And you can restart your, your default web app. Um, I'm going to actually go to my app pool for my CRM, which is here, and I'm going to recycle that. And then now our default screen now becomes A uh, default screen. Um, <laughs> Sometimes the I recycle the went app pool three takes times extra. today. <laughs> yeah, let me take a moment here. Um, you need to click harder. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, let me take a let me look at. Let me see where our. Um, I'm going to open up the files and make sure that they're in place. So I'm just loading the the uh, directory where we placed them uh, in my web shell. So this is, um, well, let's show me the path up here. There we go. It's the Blackbaud, Black, it's my vroot browser web UI plugins custom min directory where we place these. Um, and I'm just looking to make sure that we actually have the CSS, which we do. Um, Try an incognito window. Maybe. Uh, let me see here. I 
It looks the same, though. Yeah, it's the same. I'm Keegan, any ideas? <laughs> I did run through this twice this morning and then perfectly fine both times. So I'm trying to figure out what I missed. So it uh, is saving in Visual Studio Code. Like if we open the CSS file in Notepad++ just to kind of quickly check that. Uh, it's in there. One unsaved. Oh, this is that. Let me uh, open that. Let me make sure I'm opening this in. It should have at least dropped it in place, but I'm going to open this. Um, and of course, it's updating now. Run as administrator. Everything that yeah, came wrong, with, uh, going wrong. <laughs> of course. With, <laughs> with Visual plenty. Studio Code, I found at opening as administrator is good, and then opening the um, the folder with all those files in, and not just the file, but opening the folder. Yeah, that's where can, I'm at right here. Yeah, so I I'm see. That's what you got. Yeah. And uh, if I save this, let's see, this is that. Let's save that just to make sure it saves. Oh, there's an intent. Okay, that's fine. So here's our SCSS. If I save this and I. It looks like my plugin might not be loaded. Oh, it's running an update. Uh, the plugin I use, let me make sure it's working, uh, is um, the SAS Lab compiler. It's in, okay, now I have the watch SAS. So maybe that was something that was fun doing. So let's take these off. Let's come back to here. So this is my, S, uh, my SAS file. I'm going to tell it to watch it. That's what this plugin, the live SAS compiler, does for Visual Studio Code. Um, it wants to update everything. Okay, so it looks like it actually generated my map and my CSS, so that's good. The CSS is in here. And let's go back and see if I can. While it's um, while it's updating there, uh, Jeremy, that, that map file, um, I found it to be quite useful actually just to um, also deploy that map file, at least in the test environment, because um, it, uh, it will help you um, when you're kind of clicking around in the uh, in the CSS to show you, you know, how the CSS maps back to the back to the SAS, uh, show you the line number of the SAS. I don't know if you've had the same experience, but um, be kind of it's it's a kind of a useful uh, file to so, deploy as well. Very cool. Um, that's good. No, I haven't actually used that. I, I've done very little with that SAS myself. I'm more of a CSS direct person. I've been dipping my toes into SAS more. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, that's great to know. Um, okay, so looking at browser and then just making sure that everything's in here. And yeah. UI and plugins and custom and min. And there she is. Hmm. Uh, do you think that your brand options, uh, can we go back to your brand options? You know options? what, did that not save? That may have been, that may have been it. So I put this into here. Maybe it didn't. So then I will uh, I'll make sure that that's saved. So actually open it again. And that's in there new. OK. So save it again for good measure. Um, and then we will go into IIS again, recycle our app. In my experience here, you only need to recycle the app pool uh, after you when make the DLL change. goes in. Yeah, when you change that brand options, and then there it there goes. it was. It looks like Notepad plus plus didn't save it at that time. So the original time. So voila. So it should have been very simple. <laughs> um, <laughs> less simple if you don't actually follow all the steps um, and have everything saved. So once you've done, once I've done that, you can see now you have, you know, this way different look and feel. Um, everything's been changed uh, for here. So now that that's in place, now you can actually come into your, if you want to modify the, the CSS directly, you can do that. Um, or you can modify the SAS and then recompile it to the CSS. So for instance, if we want to make uh, a small change here, uh, let me go into my thing. Where is it? I'm going to pull up. I want to change the header 
uh, well, actually, let's just change. Let's do something really simple and let's just change this primary additional color. So let's pick a different color for our gradients and we can say, well, we're more of a bluish company. So let's go with this kind of color. And then we can save that. And my CSS compiler compiled it. So now you can see that it actually updated it in our CSS here. And now if we go back to here, all we have to do is refresh. And you can see we've got an entirely new look. But you say we don't want this to be a gradient. You know, we're more of a flat company and we don't like this. So let's go in and make that just a uh, flat color. So we'll go here, find the style. This one happens to be uh, this one happens to be BBUI header title is the style up there. And uh, we look for that. And if I cut this stuff out, there we go. So instead of it being this gradient, I will comment that out. And let's just give it a static background color. Um, let's just say it's going to be aqua. So we'll save that. And then we can come back over and see. We now have an aqua title. Hmm. And so anything in here that has a style. So ultimately, the way that I go through and find things is uh, I do. I use the inspector in my browser, so I will inspect something. So if I want to know what style I want to modify, for instance, so uh, maybe I want to change this entire section here. Um, I'll find out what it is. And I can see that this is going to be using this style BBUI pages content container. And so I can change the background of that and it should change the entire background of that page. And just or a quick can... point here. Uh, sorry, Jeremy, I, I no, interrupted absolutely. you a bit there. Uh, I just wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to point out in the uh, uh, in the inspector on the right where the styles list uh, is included. Uh, you can see there at uh, there are different uh, like line numbers uh, for the SCSS file. So um, you can um, you know, kind of quickly go directly to your S SCSS file and go to the place where certain things have been declared that way. Uh, if you include that that dot map file in your, uh, uh, you know, with your CSS file, that then you'll be able to see these, you know, these SCSS line numbers, which uh, I was, you know, pointed out earlier is, is kind of useful, but uh, just something I, I found the, the other day that I just wanted to point out that while you were great. in the inspector. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had not noticed that. That is awesome. So the, the map allows it to map it back to the, the original SCSS. Yeah, yeah. It takes a little, it's a little bit of a performance hit, I'm told. Uh, so when you're doing this in production, you might just want to deploy just the CSS file and not the SCSS and map, but uh, there you go. Oh, perfect. Um, so, I mean, as you can see, we could go through and tweak and change anything that's in here. Um, we also have the option of adding JavaScript. So as long as uh, you have this file in here, you can add your JavaScript to here. So for instance, let's just add something simple just so we can demonstrate that it works. Um, and so I'm just going to load, all assets are loaded on the uh, window add, uh, or on the window on load. So I'll save that. And now if we refresh, boom, all assets are loaded. So our JavaScript got executed and we can put any JavaScript we want in there really uh, and let that run. We can also, instead of using straight JavaScript, we have access to use jQuery. So I'll use the jQuery way of doing this. And again, uh, we can see if we reload it, document is ready. So you can put all kinds of event handlers in there. If you want to add some custom event, you can pop up dialogues. You can do on you know, on screen helpers. Uh, I know that uh, internally we've worked with doing some uh, walkthroughs that pop up in JavaScript when you go to certain pages. But there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. Um, none that I have demonstrable today, um, but that's a little beyond here. But definitely uh, allows you to do, the, to do that kind of stuff. Um, and for right now, I'll just take that out. Um, but ultimately, you do need to keep these named skin combo min CSS, and you do need this to be named the, the web shell page combo min JS. Um, Keegan, unless there's any other way to change that, I think they have to be exactly those names, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so as long as you have those two files, then it'll look and load them and, them, you know, and, and uh, 
load them in and into the into the product. So, and and um, they, uh, although they have the you know the word "min" in there, they don't need to be minified or uglified uh, right. for that for it to work. And, uh, but you can if you figure if you get it yep. to the point where you like it, you can absolutely minify it and put it in there. Um, but unfortunately, if you're if even if it's unminified, you you definitely have to put it in the the min name either way. Yep. Um, but it works either way. Um, okay, so there's a couple more things I just wanted to point out as tips and tricks here. So let me get back to my PowerPoint. Present. So we're past the recycle your app pool. That's good. So the development steps, of course, I went through are you know, make your desired CRM styling changes to the SAS file. And uh, in a code editor, you can use you know, Visual Studio Code. You can use Atom. You can use uh, Notepad++, Notepad, whatever you'd like. Um, then you can you run a CS SCSS to CSS translation tool. Uh, you can do that through, like I said, the plugin that I'm using for Visual Studio Code. But there are many other ways to do it. You can use the Node.js command line methods. Um, there are online converters if you want to just paste your, your code into it and get it back out as CSS. Um, I, I find the the you know, Visual Studio Code Watcher is you know the the live converter compiler, live compiler, live compiler to be the easiest for me. But of course, um, you're free to choose whichever way suits your process. And then of course your styling updates. And again, I think this is in the export from Google to PowerPoint. It didn't take advantage of my auto numbering, so I apologize. I'm not uh, somebody who thinks you count from one to one to one, but that did happen here. So sorry about that. Um, and uh, anyways. Once you do those and you save it, your styling is instantly reflected if you've done the setup process. Um, so for some tips, so one, uh, you can embed images if you want to um, and fonts. Uh, we recommend doing the base 64 encoded version. So you can use Transfonter uh, to, to tr encode uh, fonts into base 64 and you can use uh, base 64 image DE is, is one. There's a lot of these online, but um, and in fact, I'll just kind of go through and show um, yes, I'll go through and show you kind of what happens here. So if, if you want to embed an image, uh, you can, let's just find one in my downloads. So for instance, I have a Blackboard logo. Um, I can just drag this into here and show the image or show the code and it, it this is what it looks like and you can show it with or without a background it's got a clear background transparent on the size that it is but this is the key thing here so if you put if you want to make an image tag you can say image uh, source equals and then this is your code to put in there and it will display this image in there without having to drop an image anywhere just putting it in your code if you want to use it for a css background uh, you would you would use the CSS background uh, background image, uh, and then you would put this code in there for that. So you can still uh, choose though to uh, you know just use a direct URL if you have absolutely uh, yeah, yeah if you want to drop something out um, in there. This just kind of makes it self-contained, so you can just kind you can just it, well for one it'll 100% live through upgrades because it's embedded in your your SAS and CSS. Um, the other ways, of course, you just have to kind of make sure that those folders have the images you want in them and they don't get moved or deleted. Yeah. So, uh, Jeremy, I uh, got a question here. Uh, James is asking whether um, this tool gives us the ability to have more than three columns on the functional area pages. So I guess, you know, the billing and constituents and treasury represent three columns here. Um, I don't know if I you have an answer well, offhand. I yeah. don't have an answer offhand. That's something mm -hmm. the 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 uh, depth of what we've done is just styling the look and feel, not actually restructuring the pages. Um, but I'm sure with JavaScript you could do any of that if you wanted to. Um, that's my impression as well. It, it, well yeah. it, because of course this is again that's that's what the tool is using is CSS and JavaScript in the front end, and anything you want to do to override or change that is possible. It just may not be super super convenient or easy. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, ultimately you could change the styles that are, you know, you could override the styles that, and, in, in, uh, that are already on here. So if we were to look into here and see, you know, I mean, this is the DOM and you, so you can modify anything on here, but this is the task button container. Um, right now it has a set style 
It has set margins. It has all kinds of stuff in here. So you could effectively, yeah, override all of these action groups and action, you know, all of these styles if you wanted to and tweak their alignments and their, and their styles and all that stuff. So ultimately, yes, I don't have a great example of it being done, but you know, if you want to go through and override all these, 100%, you can override every one of them. Yeah, you could you could go so you know as far as to try and make things you know even somewhat somewhat responsive. Although given the quantity of of, of tags and classes and you know nested stuff involved, that might be a bit of a uh, a tall order to kind of try and rearrange things consistently across uh, all the different kind of functional. Uh, feature areas uh, in the product, but uh, certainly free to make changes and, you know, get, give it a shot. And uh, the, so the SAS that comes with it has a pretty extensive list of overridden styles. Uh. So you can, I mean, I'm just kind of going through here and I know it's too much to read, but you can see there's, you know, just about everything's in here. Um, and a lot of it comes down to some of these, uh, You've got a gradient, right, left gradient, right gradient. So which way you want the gradient to go direction in a list of colors. Uh, you've got a tint and a shade color, you know, functions to make things a little easier for, for doing gradients. Um, and then you've, you've got a lot of variables up here and you can add your own variables and use them, reuse them throughout it. But a lot of, a lot can be done just going through this list and saying, you know what, I want to modify these to be closer to, to my desired look and feel or my organization's look and feel. And you can, you can get a long way just modifying these. And then rebuilding it too, um, or even like for instance, uh, you can change the font family. You know, you can import a different font family and and change it uh, as well. You can, um, yeah, you can do a lot with just modifying the variables. Even so, even if you're afraid to dip your toes too much into the this the CSS the SAS parts, just modifying these gets you a long way as well. Um, there is one additional thing. So if say you wanted to change all of the uh, colors. And let's present this again. I'm not colors, I apologize. All of the font sizes. So the changing all of them is, is throughout the, there's a lot of styles that use font that, that have a basic, um, well, a basic font size. Um, so I think right now it maybe it's 14. I think that's the default one, but it's if 12 you make, actually. Yeah. It's 12. Okay. So if you want yep. to, for instance, make the default size 14, um, we, we have this little, uh, and it's, it's on the readme as well for the project, but, um, this is the list of styles, list of uh, classes that you want in your style to actually change uh, most of the project to the to the same size. So if you wanted your default to be 14 or nine, and you wanted it to be almost everywhere, this is what you would paste in there and just change it to what you you desired sizes. And again, it's not 100%. I don't think it's not perfect, but it gets you a long ways. Yeah, towards. it's that's my experience as well. It's if you change something from 12 to 14, depending on the, the font as well, it, uh, it'll get you like Jeremy, you're saying partial way there, but there's, uh, it's good to kind of go through and, you know, develop a checklist of places to, uh, just to kind of inspect things. There may be tiles like constituent tiles where you may need to kind of decrease the, you know, the line spacing to make things fit for instance. And, um, Different headers may show up in a uh, in a way that you uh, don't expect, so uh, it's good just to go through a run through uh, after you make a uh, an update to that font size. Great. And um, so that that's all I have to show. Uh, are there any questions out there? And I'll just kind of, kind of leave it on this slide here. Um, we're definitely available to contact if you have any questions. Um, but uh, Keegan, did you have anything else that I may have missed or that you wanted to add? Uh, not really. It's uh, I've done this for a couple clients now, and it's uh, you know like pretty much as uh, you were explaining there, Jeremy. It's uh, there are a lot of those SAS variable declarations that uh, at the top of the top of the file, and it's a I found it's a process of you know going to um, you know the the websites to kind of get get the colors get the fonts um, and then uh, you know begin to replicate kind of the look and feel of the website into the uh, into the CRM styling and uh, 
after, you know, after kind of doing some of those main things, then it, it just becomes um, more of a, I don't know, just kind of a, a Venetian blind sort of CSS exercise just to move things around um, a, as you want. Uh, but, uh, you know, like at the end of the day, there's, there's not that much to kind of rearrange because you're probably not going to be like, you know, doing like changing the number of columns in something or making tiles look fundamentally different or changing the entire, you know, way that batch, uh, you know, batch grids present or anything. It's, it's mostly, uh, this is kind of a, a nice little win to just kind of bring, um, you know, your CRM environment into a, uh, a kind of an in-house, uh, in-house look and feel in um, just this fundamental sort of way. Um, there is more things, I think, I don't know, Jeremy, if um, I noticed in that, that other page with kind of the pink styling that um, you had gotten rid of um, some of the logos here, right? Some of these older kind of images, uh, like the gear images and, and such. Um, there is like a font awesome reference in the SAS file and, you know, like yes. one thing to bring it into more of a modern look might be to update um, – you know some of those uh, some of those older images to icons, right? Like font awesome icons, or take them out, just like um, what you've done here entirely. If that's uh, more of a minimum, you know, yeah, minimalist look. Yeah, yeah. So that's like another a thing that uh, you know you might be interested in doing. Uh, just some other thoughts. And uh, another thing that I've seen a lot, uh, people want to differentiate between, you know, dev, test, staging, and, and then the production. So they'll replace, you know, the, you know, they'll put test here or production here in, in a theme and then want to change, you know, the entire bar across and maybe put a pop up at the bottom it's in JavaScript that says, remember, you're in test or, or whatnot. Um, but I've seen some of those kinds of things done useful, you know, more utilizational type things, utilitarian, but yeah. So, uh, any questions from everybody? I have one. Sure. Justin, yes. First of all, this is cool. And uh, hello, Keegan, long time no see. Uh, so, uh, just to make sure I understand. So, there's two, there's a SCSS and a CSS. And I think I heard Jeremy say <laughs> that he sometimes is like a straight CSS guy. Is it, when doing this, is it proper to just make changes to the SCSS or is there a, like a two way, like if it's a, if you're using the live compile, yeah. is it, if you make it's a change? It's not two way. It's yeah. not two so way. Okay. Generally you, you modify the, S, the SAS file, the SCSS, and then it'll update and overwrite your CSS. Okay. Um, we, like I said, the, the style that we did in here, um, the developer who did this for us uh, in house wasn't super keen on SAS. So he just modified the CSS but we wouldn't be able to pull that back out very easily uh, into the okay. SAS. There may be a tools for that, but not. it doesn't quickly uncompile into, into SAS. So yeah, generally you, you're, if you're using the SAS directory, or the SAS director direction, sorry, then uh, the CSS is, is the end product, but not something you want to modify afterwards. It'll get okay. over it. All right, so, so, the, so the CSS is basically the, the, what, the deployment artifact. Exactly. Um, out, of, out of everything. Um, and then, then the other question I had was, and I and I think you kind of addressed it, but I was wondering, is there is there a canonical list of all the CSS classes, or is it basically using the inspect to find that? No more. Uh, I have not seen one. <laughs> um, okay. So I've been using that. Um, the good thing about the uh, this file is that it does have a lot of them. Yeah, I saw that. So almost all of them, um, and then they're in there. You know, they're usually lumped together, even in okay. some of the combinations you need. Um, but w the way I've been doing it when I when I modify it is I will go through a finding section and then just search through here to find it. And if it's not there, I'll add it. But generally, it's here. Um, but there's, uh, as far as I know, there's no reference. Uh, Keegan, do you know of a reference? No, I don't. Yeah, what you uh, your experience is pretty similar to mine, Jeremy. Okay. okay. Great questions. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This is very cool. Uh, Mosin is asking a question about. Um, so let's see. Can we create custom styling uh, like a dashboard report by combining 
data across multiple data lists or view forms uh, where data is being pulled from external data sources. Um, just trying to wrap my head around that uh, myself here. Um, Theoretically, I would say if you want to get really advanced, it, then you could write, um, you could add JavaScript that one will inject styles into places. So if as long as you uh, know the place you want to anchor it to, you could inject a new style. You could also uh, use JavaScript here to uh, you know, look at the page you're on, run custom um, Ajax calls to pull data in from other places. There's nothing really out of the box, but the fact that it allows you to run JavaScript and then the fact that uh, you can use JavaScript to modify anything in the page uh, mm -hmm. and even the CSS uh, means that, yes, it's possible. It, this does not lend itself to letting you do that easily, though. And just because you can, does it mean, doesn't mean you that should there? You should. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Could I just add, for sort of a philosophical Blackboard perspective, this is called styling extensions for a reason, not substance. And I'm kind of joking about that, but I don't see this as a toolkit to build content and add features to the product like the SDK would do, rather to extend or change the look and feel of features that are written by the SDK. So, you know, when I read your question, most tend to say, I want to create a dashboard or a report that would be done in the SDK. And the feature you're you're showing here would change its look, its feel, its color, its sizing, but not build the feature itself. And so just, just making sure that that was a and, thought in everyone's mind. And you definitely want to use the SDK for that. You're going to be yeah. fighting yourself doing it through here. And, and yeah, so even, and, and then you got to deal with upgrades and other issues. So yeah, going through the SDK is always the better way to add content. But this, this is would just be a nice way to style it. If you wanted to add your own like global classes, for example, that are outside of what the what's what, you, what we see in Blackboard CRM, this might be a place to put that, and then they could be consumed by those SDK created components. Yes. Yes. By yep. global classes, Justin, we're talking about styling classes that you can yeah. extend into uh, other classes. Yeah. 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 yeah like either yeah. like all, like all of the 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 container types of of classes that we've defined in here like if you have your own ones that you want to use and that but you would only use them in customizations because they obviously wouldn't be part of any out of the box right like platform component but this could be the container for all of your styling that, yeah anything that you, you put in here is, is going to be available to the pages so yeah yeah because I've had individual like customizations where, you know, I've I've created classes at the top of like the HTML component that I've used within that, and some of that stuff might be repeated across a couple um, components. So, you know, from a organization of style standpoint, it, absolutely you could consider doing this. And it's still like, in that that realm of look and feel and style. Yes, so, absolutely. Yes. Perfect. And just to put a plug in for for using SAS to uh, kind of help realize that uh, it'll it, I think at the end of the day it uh, it'll be a little easier doing that in SAS versus direct uh, CSS uh, be more extensible and uh, a little less code probably too. Yeah. Any, any, why is it called SAS when it's SCSS? <laughs> Try to pronounce SCSS. I, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Yeah. So, great questions, guys. Any more? Okay. Well, that's all I have. Um, thanks everybody for coming and checking this out. And like I said, it's it's available on our GitHub, and um, I'll put our emails back up there just in one more last time, just in case. And uh, if you do have questions, feel free to contact us. But of course, it doesn't want to stay up. Technical issues. There we go. I'll just throw those up there again. The recorded presentations have a have a slight edge in, on us in that respect, don't they? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Then I guess we'll uh, call.
call it an end. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.